Hey everyone, and welcome to I Can't Believe This Happened. That happened. I'm doing great today. Um, sorry, it's been a while. I did want to sneak in because this is one of my favorite months. I love Black History Month and I think I need to start doing an entire series called Please Someone in Hollywood Do a Movie About This Person because I need you to tell me at the end of this if you would not binge an entire series about this man. Today, we're going to be talking about Matthew Henson, and I am impressed that I have never heard about him. Impressed, sad, um, frustrated, because I would have loved to have studied this man back in my school days, and you get to hear all about him. So we're going to talk about the first person to ever step foot in the North Pole, and that would be Matthew Henson and some people who went with him. We're going to talk about that in just a minute, but he had an amazing life and it wasn't always happy. And I want you to hear all about the amazing chance encounters that led him to going from living in Maryland to being one of the first people to step foot in the North Pole. I mean, that's just so cool. Okay. So he was born August 8th in 1866 on a farm in Maryland and his parents were sharecroppers and that was a very, very difficult life. And it did not offer a lot of opportunities for schooling. It really did not offer a lot of opportunities for schooling when he became an orphan and he escaped to Georgetown um, because it just was too dangerous for him and his family to stay in Maryland. So he ended up moving from Georgetown up to Washington, D.C., where an uncle decided to take him in and to take care of him. And during this time, he still was not going to school. He was washing dishes to make money and to help with his living expenses. So he ended up going to a very important speech that I like to think to sort of lit him up and change his viewpoints. And it's amazing how sometimes we can hear someone talk or we can read a book, or we can watch a movie, or even hear a song that really hits us and strikes us and makes us sort of rethink things and see the world through a different lens. And I kind of feel like that might have happened for him. So in 1863, he was really inspired by a very important man. I am hoping and very surely you've heard of Frederick Douglass. If you have not, Please look him up. Um, he is an amazing man and some of the most beautiful speeches. So he got to hear Frederick Douglass. And I think that sort of sparked something in him because this is where his life really starts to change. And he has more of a focus on education at this point. So at 12 years old, he becomes a cabin boy on the Katie Hines. And the cabin boy means he just did um, all the little work that people didn't necessarily want to do on a ship. So during that time, he was working and he would go to ports in China and Japan and Africa and even all the way up to Russia. So 12 years old and he's on these boats getting to see the world. And during this time, the ship's captain decided to take on uh, Matthew Henson's education and teach him how to read and write. And, and then um, he returned from... So when Matthew Henson returned from this incredible voyage as a very, very young man, he had a chance encounter with the commander, Robert E. Peary, and he is going to become a huge part of Matthew Henson's life. Their fates become very intertwined and they end up, I think it's 18 years of exploring together. So once Robert learned of Matthew's sea experience, which was quite vast, especially for someone so young, he really did understand how to work on a boat. Commander Robert E. Peary hires him for a surveying tour of Nicaragua and Matthew impresses Peary on the voyage and becomes his first, first in command from there forward. No more ships cabin boy. He was absolutely the first hand man. He knew how to do just about anything. And you're going to learn a little bit more about that when I say anything. This man be is so impressive. So for the first 20 years of ex expeditions, it's pretty much centered around the Arctic where they were trading very heavily with the Inuit, um, which is First Nations up there. And Matthew fell in love with the culture and the people, and he wanted to learn everything he could. And he really did. He became so skilled in things like igloo building and 
all of the crafts and trades of the Inuit people, he was very interested in learning and he became one of the most skilled people in learning how to train sled dogs and ride sled dogs. Um, he became a very skilled craftsman um, and he learned how to build housing. So you can imagine what a incredible benefit this man was on any sort of trip through the snow. So in 1909, Peary mounts an expedition to reach the North Pole. And he and Matthew board the Roosevelt, leading, leaving Greenland along with four Inuit assistants. Now, this is something that just sort of bothers me. I'm just going to do a quick aside. It took me so much research to find out these four Inuit people's names. And I'm going to horribly mangle their names. And I am so sorry. Please go to the show notes. If you can find a correct translate or uh, pronunciation, please let me know. But it really makes me angry. That it took me so much research. Every single biography I found about Matthew Henson had the words, the four Inuit men who went with him. And none of them, except one source that I could find, gave the names. All right. So the names of the guides were Egingwa, Ukwa, Uta, and Siglo. Um, and these were the first people to step on the North Pole. So mind blown, amazing. Um, Matthew was one of the six chosen to make the final leg of the journey. It was reported that um, that uh, Henson was no longer able to continue by foot. Um, there just was no way through on foot. And because of his skills with um, the dog sleds, that's what he used. And he went ahead to, as a scout to, um, he was the one to plant the American flag up there. So there's a lot of controversy and there is a lot of um, back and forth, as you can imagine, on what happened. But these accounts are backed up by the National Geographic Association, as well as the Naval Affairs Subcommittee of the U.S. House of Representatives. OK, so in 1912, when he gets back, he writes a book about his adventures and it reads beautifully and it's fascinating. And it talks all about not just his journey to the North Pole, but his time with the Inuits and how much he learned about their culture and the crafts and the artistry and all the things he learned there. Um, what's frustrating, as I'm sure you can imagine what's next, is he did not get the fame and accolades at the time that he really should have. Uh, Peary did, um, but uh, Matthew Hansen did not. And he ended up working as a clerk for a very long time in relative obscurity. Long overdue <laughs> in 1937, Mr. Henson was given the membership to the New York Explorers Club. Now, if you ever want a good research or a nice rabbit hole to dive down, if you're ever interested, research the New York Explorers Club. It's fascinating. Mason, I'll do an episode on it, but I have so many episodes I want to talk about soon. Um, so almost at the end, ah, almost at 10 minutes, that goes really fast. I'm almost done, I promise. So Congress awarded him the Peary Polar Expedition Medal in 1944, and he was invited to the White House by two presidents, President Truman and President Eisenhower before he died in 1955. And there was even an exception made and he was buried at Arlington Cemetery, which is not usually allowed for people who have not <laughs> done uh, military service. All right. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am really sorry this is so late. I was working on three other people I want to talk about for Black History Month, but when I found an explorer who went all the way up to the North Pole, everything else kind of went by the wayside. I just had to talk about Mr. Matthew Henson. And if anyone has any poll at Netflix, I would so much rather watch a show about Mr. Henson than um, just about anything else that's been coming out lately. Um, so if you know anyone, put some pressure on them. This would be amazing. All right. Thank you so much. If there's anything wrong, I don't believe I put anything wrong in this episode. I usually do, but I was trying to do this quickly. So I think I forgot to do that. If I did, let's just say it was on purpose and you can go ahead and correct me in the show notes. Um, we are a little baby podcast. I do not do any advertising for this podcast episode. So if you would be so kind as to, if you enjoyed this, say something nice on Apple podcast. Um, and also if you could share with friends, family, or if you are homeschool or an educator, please share with that group as well. Thank you so much, everyone. I will try to be much better this year, at least putting out one episode a month. We will see how well I do. And if you have any recommendations for things you'd like me to talk about, please leave the notes in the comment section. 
Um, if you'd like to see any of the books that I publish for kids, um, head over to owlandtwine.com. That's where you can find most of my artwork and a lot of these episodes. Have a great week, everyone.